hosted by Chance Stitch 5434. Am I the butthole? We're not going to my twin sister's birthday party because my parents are not letting me have one. We both turned 16. My parents have not been happy with my performance at school for the last couple of years so they decided that I won't get to have a birthday this year. I admit I have not done all that well but I've tried as hard as she has. It's not like I am screwing up on purpose or I am a trouble kid. I have not had any real trouble in my life. Anyway, I just don't find it cool to have to come to a birthday party on my birthday so I decided that I'll just not go. No drama. No entitlement, I just won't go and instead spend time with a couple of my friends who weren't invited. So I didn't take any guests away from her party. I did tell my parents about my plans and they laughed me off and didn't take me seriously. So the birthday came and I didn't go. I got a gift for my sister and gave it to her before the party so she had known me not being there is not because of ill feeling towards her. Got home late at night and my parents told me my absence was noticed by relatives and they were embarrassed. I defended myself by explaining my reasoning and also saying that I had told them about it but they said they didn't think I was being serious. They say in a healthy family people come to each other's birthdays and what I did put them in a position that they had to explain away my unacceptable behaviour to relatives and this is not cool. They also say this night was about my sister and I was not there to support her and if I had problems with parents I should have tried to solve it with them rather than damaging my sister's night. Turned out the answer they gave to relatives for my absence was that it was my choice to do a smaller celebration with my friends. It's not technically a lie, but they left out the part which they told me they wouldn't let me have a party which started this whole thing. And I am grounded for two weeks. Am I the butthole? And now to the comments. A comment from Blanket Statement Fiv. They say in a healthy family people come to each other's birthdays. In a healthy family, you don't tell a kid they can't have a birthday party just because they are not getting good enough grades. Your parents are the ones creating an unhealthy family dynamic, not you. Are you failing classes? If it's a case of some BS and CS post your report card and this whole thing on Facebook slash whatever social media your parents use, put their asses on blast. Is your sister aware of the situation? If you can get her to back you up on this, it'll be pretty hard for your parents to deny. Your parents are playing a favourites to a disgusting degree and they know that they will look bad if people find out. If this kind of thing happens in the future, go to the party and stir the pot as much as possible and go for maximum pity points. Not the butthole, BTW. A comment from OP. I've never failed a class. My grades are just not up their expectations. Is your sister aware of the situation? If you can get her to back you up on this, it'll be pretty hard for your parents to deny. She is a word, but she won't get involved. She wants to stay out of it. Such awareness minus 2,960 likes to add. Not the butthole. Healthy families wouldn't do what your parents did. There's a reason your parents lied to your relatives and it is because they knew they would be judged negatively for what they did. Yes, there should be some kind of consequences for not doing well in school, but not getting to celebrate your birthday while allowing your twin sister to have a party on the same day is a really twisted form of punishment. Your parents have no idea what healthy families do. Why Stondon commented. Not the butthole. I worked in volunteer in education. You need to speak to a trusted adult at school. Your parents' attitude is not helpful. If you are trying your parents' attitude and the pressure from them is not only not going to improve your grades, it's likely to make things worse. It's damaging to your self-esteem and mental health. Your parents can't punish you into a genius. I have seen some horrible consequences of this kind of parental attitude over the years. Sounds like your parents need reality check from an educational professional. Not everyone has the same academic prowess even between identical twins, let alone fraternal ones you don't say which you are. If you are struggling at school, things to consider. There are different kinds of smart. Consider what you are struggling with. You may have a lower level SEN. 40% of people do have various levels of SEN special educational need from the very severe to the very minor. And if that's the case for you, there may be strategies to make your study more effective. Academic smarts are not all that is required for success in life. Everyone has something they shine at. You just need to find yours. Again, please, please, OP, speak to a trusted adult at school. Your mental health is important and more vulnerable as a teen. Edit. 
I would let it accidentally come out to your most gossipy relative what actually happened and the fact you're now grounded because they felt the need to lie about their actions. The truth is if they felt it necessary to lie about what they did, they know they're wrong. OP commented. I wouldn't even say I'm struggling at school. I am just not as good as my parents want me to be. Suki Perminus 7 commented. Not the butthole. It was seriously a poopy thing for them to do to you. I don't know if they make your sister the golden child and you the scapegoat and punish you for things, but I would tell your relatives exactly the reason you weren't there. Because their behaviour is not okay. OP likes to add. If I tell relatives, I expect there will be more punishments. To the next post. Posted by Livid Jury 4998. Am I the butthole? For not wanting to get rid of my roommates as per wife's demands. Okay, backstory time. I am slash 34 and my wife F slash 34 will have been married for three years this upcoming December. I own a two family house on an acre in central Jersey that I purchased when I was 25. I rent out one side and live in the other. I have two spare bedrooms that I also sublet, one to a dear friend of mine M slash 35 and another to my cousin F slash 35. I have always rented these rooms and having the extra income between the rental side and the rooms I rent on my side means the house basically pays for itself mortgage-wise. I have to come out of pocket for utilities such as garbage, electricity, fuel, oil, etc. My monthly cost of living is anywhere from 600 minus 800 bucks handling the aforementioned bills. Relatively cheap for New Jersey, where a two-bedroom apartment can run you 2,500 bucks. So now to the issue at hand, my wife wants to get rid of our roommates. As of now, she lives for free, absolutely zero cost of living, which has helped her significantly regarding paying down debts, fixing her credit and so on. She's not out of the woods yet, but she's well on her way. I do say in about another year or so, she'll be 100% debt free. She has expressed in the past that she would like to live alone but at the time it just wasn't economically feasible for us to do so she was working, then COVID happened, blah blah blah, no big deal, right? Also I should mention you wouldn't even know we have roommates, sometimes I go days without bumping into one of them. Anyways this week she slaps me with an ultimatum out of the blue that either the roommates move out or she's going to leave me. I stated that I did not think that was the smartest financial move as she only wants to give them 30 days which would means we would be looking at having to come up with 1600 bucks the following month. Q argument. She states she can afford to make up the difference and that paying it would be worth being able to live alone together. Am I the butt for thinking this is stupid, that giving up almost 20k a year in rental income on the drop of a dime does not make any sense, not to mention telling a friend of 22 years as well as my cousin sorry guys the wife's giving you 30 days no just good luck. Furthermore this income allows us to travel whenever we want, buy whatever we want, go out whenever we want. It basically helps make us very flexible financially. Also why can't we compromise? Okay, do you want them gone? Let's stick it out for one more year, knock out the rest of your debt and also give the rumors plenty of notice that this is what we are going to pursue. TLDR, wife wants room, it's gone, husband thinks it's stupid because money. Wife threatens to leave, husband still thinks getting rid of rental income is stupid but offers compromise. Wife will not compromise. Is he the butt? And now to the comments. A comment from sometimes busts. Lol. You are trying to make an emotional issue financial. This is not a financial issue to her. She had rather be in a little debt than live with your friend and cousin. Your wife is saying she wants a loan time with you without always having to be on. What she is asking and stating is very reasonable. Precious few married people want to live with roommates for a very good reason. Privacy. While these are your friends, you are asking way too much of your wife to expect her to live with your cousin and your buddy indefinitely. She has done so for three years. That is enough. Honestly, everything you have stated clearly illustrates that you value money and you value your friendships over your wife's comfort and feeling of security in this relationship. How would you feel if you lived with your wife's cousin and her BFF? If you never got to just hang out in your home without having to be on? Dude, read the room. Life changes and needs in a relationship change. You are not swinging single. This is not your girlfriend. This is your wife, whom you should consider full and equal partner with equal say in this relationship. 
You've made it clear you do not. Apollon the Greatest commented. Wow. It is reasonable to want 20 can come a year, but it is also reasonable at 35 to not want to live with roommates. It seems that your issue is communication, not the roommates, to be honest, and that's it for this subreddit to solve. Catman22 likes to add. He the butthole. You're willing to let your wife leave your butt because of money she even offered to make up the difference? I guess my question to you is what do you want out of a marriage? You need to start thinking of your family, wife, and not your roommates and money. The fact that you might let her leave you over this situation is making the marriage not look too great. A comment from Mimowich. He the butthole. For a 34 slash year old married person with no kids, there are way too many people hanging around your place. Your wife must feel like she's living in an undergrad fluff house. A comment from Not My Pet Out. Not the butthole, so wait. Are you saying that you're willing to get rid of them after a year? And the issue is just that she wants them gone in 30 days? A comment from me, Hinch. Info, did you discuss plans for kids at Cicerohan you married your wife? Did you discuss a timeline for when it would be just the two of you? Or did you two agree we'll be married roommates with rental benefits? I am confused about the missing couple dynamic. To the next post. Posted by Forward Into That. Am I the butthole for getting upset that my fiancé took my car without asking? So my 24 female fiancé, 28 male, has two jobs currently. He's a director of social and community services during the day and a bar DJ at night. I try to be as supportive as possible because I know he's working a lot and he'll allow him to take my car since it's bigger and he can load up his equipment. This weekend he was DJing the club on Friday night and doing a private event Saturday mid-noon. He asked to borrow my car for the Friday night and I allowed him to. He was in a hurry the next morning to leave for his next gig, so I didn't get a chance to speak to him. That morning when I checked, my car was still in the driveway and had taken his car. I had made plans that morning to spend time with friends, so I took a shower and got ready. A few hours later, I stepped outside and my car was gone. At first I panicked because I thought my car was stolen, but after a few phone calls and speaking with his assistant, I found out my fiancé came back to the house and took my car. Mind you, he never texted or called me to let me know he was taking my car. I was upset because I had already made plans with friends and now I couldn't go because I was stuck at the house with no transportation. When my fiancé got home, I confronted him. I told him I was upset because he didn't ask to take my car this morning. My fiancé argued that I let him use the car last night and I should have known better that his equipment would have still been in my car and he needed to take it. I then brought up that he ended up taking both cars and asked him why that was necessary, but I didn't really get a straight answer from him. He then proceeded to tell me that I never do anything on the weekends and I should have communicated that I needed my car that day, but I don't think I need to ask to use my own car. Am I the butthole? Here? So what do you think? Share your opinions in the comments below. And now to the comments. Crystal Queen 3000 likes to add. Not the butthole, and I can think of a good reason that had me both cars. He only has one butt and can only drive one at a time. Him not giving you a straight answer is super shady. Third choice that Sherm likes to add. Not the butthole. I think you really need to figure out why and how he took both cars. Like, how did he get back at his car, and why did that seem like a good option to him? A comment from Constellation Minus 88. Not the butthole. Your car means it is assumed that you will have access to it unless explicitly communicated otherwise. He should have talked with you first. A comment from Funtime Chris 79. Not the butthole. Whether you do anything on the weekends or not does not give him the right to leave you stranded on your day off. He is a major butthole for even saying that. The fact he tried turning it around on you shows he feels entitled to taking your car the second day. A comment from Over Rice 2524. What the actual? He had to take both cars. Take back your car. There is zero reason he should have both cats and leave you stranded. Not the butthole. It didn't saw that I likes to add. Nah, fiancé is acting entitled. Who cares how you spend the weekends? You shouldn't have to ask to use your own car. Come on. 
I did tell the guy to find another car to use next time because this arrangement isn't working out. The answer is taking advantage. Not the butthole. Final decision. Edit table. To the next post. Posted by Merriment Lobster 334. Am I the butthole? For telling my family that if they don't like my house, they don't have to come here. I live in a place where real estate is expensive. No one in my family has ever had a house or own property. My grandparents on both sides, my great aunt, my parents and all of my siblings have always rented. I did too until recently. Normally I would never be able to afford a house. I could move but I like it here and everyone I know and love is here. I'm a pharmacist and it would still be difficult for me to buy real estate. But I found something I could afford and jumped at the chance. My house is on four acres and Watson was in good shape. The catch is that it is against two separate railway lines. They both run right along the property. There are also railway crossings beside my house and nearby my house. All but one are open level crossing the snow lights or barriers. Trains sound their horns because of these crossings and both lines by my property are frequently used at all hours. I don't care about the noise from the trains or their horns because I am deaf since birth. I can feel the vibrations of course but that does not bother me. I got my house for a much lower price because of the tracks running right beside my property and all the noise. If I wasn't deaf I would probably not want to live here. But it's perfect for me and allowed me to actually afford a house. No one else in my family is deaf. Ever since I bought my house they complain about the noise whenever they visit or in regular conversation sometimes. One of my siblings told me to imagine a bright light constantly shining in my eyes. I understand the analogy and even though I can't hear the noise I understand it would annoy to them. I can read lips but they also complain directly to me or in front of me. I still don't like that they complain so much. No one is forcing them to come here. I wouldn't care if it was the odd comment here or there, but it's not that. It's constant and comes up all the time even when they are not visiting. It's all of them, grandparents on both sides, great aunt, my parents and my siblings and like I said it is constant. I've lived here for almost a year now and it's still going on. My family has never been like this about anything before and we've always gotten along. I finally said that if they don't like coming to my house they don't have to come here anymore. That just got me accused of being rude and a bad host. I'm just tired of always hearing how terrible it is at my house and how no one likes it there. Was I wrong to say what I said? I really upset everyone. And now to the comments. Person off paper likes to add. Not the butthole. What is it that they expect you to do exactly? Tell the trains to stop. Congratulations on buying your first house. It sounds awesome. A con in from Spicy Sweet. What a perfect house for you. How lucky to have found it. Ignore your fam. It's the height of rudeness to complain about your host. You're absolutely right that they should either come over and be gracious, or not come over at all. Not the butthole. A comment from Striking Winter 9709. Not the butthole. I bet a great many things they have done in your life have annoyed you due to your lack of hearing. They can manage an occasional voluntary trip to a noisy place without being a drag about it. Four acres is sizable and it sounds like you're the perfect person for the place. Good for you. They can kick rocks down the railway. Brainjacker commented. That just got me accused of being rude and a bad host. Oh really? And how do they suggest you be a good host? Should you be shutting off the trains when they come by? What a ridiculous display of nonsense from people imposing on your hospitality without an equivalent home to offer. Not the butthole. A comment from Steph Netkin. Not the butthole, OP, you are tired of their complaints. To me it sounds like sour grapes, they cannot afford to buy a home, so they can feel justified in the situation by disparaging yours. Your home sounds like a wonderful investment. Hopefully they will get accustomed to the sounds. I was raised near the train tracks, so the sound of trains rolling by is soothing and nostalgic for me. Best wishes in your new home. Akari Stockery commented. Not the butthole. What are you supposed to do? Oh sorry, as your host I will stop those trains right away. Come on. To the next post. Posted by Princess Jurian. Am I the butthole? 
for rushing home to get my sister's forgotten wedding veil, but giving up on bringing it to her. My oldest sister that just got married at a venue that with no traffic is about two hours and 15 minutes away. Odette planned to wear great great grandma May's veil, which has a distinct lace pattern and is passed to only the eldest daughter. In our family it's considered good luck heavily sentimental, and we have multiple bridal pictures of eldest daughters in the veil while standing with their mom and grandma. The bridal party and family met at Odette's house before driving to the venue. The veil had been in a garment bag, hung up in front of a closet door, but the door had been opened, the hanger fell off, and none of us missed it when we packed up. We made it to the venue by noon for the four-boom wedding. Odette realized the veil was missing and ran to me in a panic, insisting I needed to be the one to go find it. Mom wouldn't drive fast enough, middle sister Constance was her maid of honor, and Dad was dealing with setup. I didn't think I could make it there and back, but Odette assisted and said that if needed we could stall the ceremony a little. I floated but sat in bumper to bumper traffic for almost two hours, ways estimating I wouldn't be at her house until at least 2.45 of them. I texted Odette that if I didn't turn around now, I wasn't going to make it. She texted back, just get out here. When I emphasized that I wouldn't make it for her wedding ceremony or reception if I didn't turn around, she said the photographer does not leave until 7, just get it here before then so mom, grandma, and I can take pictures. I made it to her house on adrenaline, but it took me forever to find a veil and get on the road again. Odette's text continued after the wedding ceremony and pictures. I was already exhausted, sitting in rush hour traffic and upset that I had missed the entire thing. After rereading our texts, they were all about Mary's veil. I realized that she didn't care at all about me being there, which upset me enough to turn around at 5.30 p.m., with an estimated arrival of 6.30 p.m. and getting later. I texted Odette that I was sorry, but the veil was put up and the house key was in the flower pot. I woke up to a ton of angry texts from her accusing me of ruining her wedding and not trying hard enough to get back. Am I the butthole? And now to the comments. Wayward Marauder commented. Not the butthole. When the absence of a veil ruins a wedding more than the absence of a family member, your priorities are skewed and you are owed nothing especially from the family member who wasn't even missed. A comment from Curious Sukheim. Not the butthole, I'm getting golden child vibes here and I'm sorry that you were treated this way. You deserved better from your sister in this moment. Please take space for yourself. Also, if the veil was so important, it would have been with her dress. Just saying. Edo changed gold to child. OP commented. That's kind, thank you. Without blaming anyone, I think what happened is that multiple people were packing and loading at the same time. I think the people loading assumed the people packing had put everything front and centre for them to grab, and the people packing assumed the people loading had grabbed everything. Mela Susan likes to add. If something was that important to me, I would have driven everyone insane with my bazillion check-ins to ensure it was still set to get packed and I would never have let the car start before ensuring it was indeed with me. Not the but all. What bothers me even more though, is the fact that only the oldest can wear it. Maybe I don't get it because I'm an only child, but I just don't understand why being born second or third should prevent you from being able to take part in a beautiful tradition. Stephanie Kin likes to add. Not the butthole, OP. You were assigned an impossible task. Your sister is misplacing her disappointment and blaming you for her own mistake. That must be incredibly upsetting. She can have pictures taken with the veil at a later date. A comment from P9 Ultimate 9. Not the butthole. The veil is allowed only for eldest daughter to wear, and younger siblings don't even have access to the sentimental family tradition experience. The younger sibling is expected to just be a servant for this special grandmother. Mother and daughter or eldest daughter own the exclusive and privileged family photo that a servant is not allowed to be in. Eldest daughter bride does not even care younger sibling missed or attend wedding ceremony and reception. That is all I have for you today. I hope you liked it. If you want more of this content, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Have a nice day and hopefully I see you soon.